All right, so in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this really bubbly kind of text style here. But first, let me shout out today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and creative people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. Settle your mind. If you're anxious, explore classes that help you express what you're feeling through your creative self-discovery. If you're uncertain about what's next, a creative challenge or productivity class may offer a helpful structure for setting small goals and feeling a fulfilling sense of accomplishment. Skillshare has membership with meaning. We believe a strong community is essential in times of hardship. Tap into the support of fellow creatives who provide encouragement, communication, and inspiration. Skillshare has so many Blender 3D classes for architectural visualization, abstract design, even a lot of graphic design things that help you with your skill. A really good class that I found super helpful is Remington Markham's Character Design and Animation course. It's really good. It's densely packed with a lot of good content and it looks amazing. You can go check that out. Skillshare is also super affordable. It's less than $10 a month with the annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, you will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So there you go. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so I'm going to go and make a new file here. We're going to be using the EV render engine. So click on this little uh, camera icon here and switch on over to EV if you're not already there. And we're going to go Shift A and we're going to add in some text. Now in this text, I'm going to hit RX90 just to flip him up. And then we'll go over here to the text and uh, we'll align him from left to center. And I'm gonna give it a K. You can give it whatever letter or word you want. So I'm gonna give it a capital K, just like that. And now we have this. What I'm gonna do is going, going over here to geometry, and I'm, I'm gonna bring the extrusion up just a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, put some depth there too to bevel it. So now we have our K. I'm gonna right click and convert it to mesh. And so now if you hit tab, you can see you have all this so let's go ahead and give it some better topology because right now it's pretty garbage if we want to displace it. So we're going to get a remesh modifier. So add remesh and then we'll bring the op tree depth pretty high up. Uh, I'm going to bring mine up to eight. You can bring it what up, up to whatever your computer can handle, but you want it to be pretty dense. So this is what we're working with now. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in my modifier. So that's going to be the displacement modifier. Click new. Click that little icon. I'm going to give it a clouds texture. I'm going to bring my depth all the way down and I'll put 0.05 on the scale. And then I'm going to bring down the strength of it on my actual letter. So something like this. It's going to be kind of slow because it's really high poly. So something like that. Now we have half of it. Now once you've set up this kind of look, mine looks like it's at negative 0.06 on the scale. I'm just going to copy this modifier. So now we get the really weird kind of bubbly text that we want um, for the holographic look. This, this can be used for many different purposes. I've animated it before. Um, it, it looks really, really cool. So this is what we have now. So what I'm going to do is hit the tilde key, go to the very front view and just set up my camera. So shift A, camera, then control all zero, snap that to view. I'm going to click the printer icon and give it 2000 by 2000. So now we have um, our camera set up here. I'm going to maybe bring it back a little bit. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and um, add in the next part, which is the wireframe. So now we're going to add in our wireframe add modifier, and we're going to get in a wireframe modifier. Pop it there. It's going to go berserk. So you need to click even thickness to take all those crazy ones out. And we're going to give our thickness 0 0.00005 enter. We want it to be very, very thin to give it almost that volumetric look. So now you can kind of barely see it, but it's very, very thin, which is what we want. I'm going to hop on over to the render view, click this guy and click this up here to remove that yellow stuff. We're going to add a new material to it and we're going to switch it over to an emission. So now you can see it's looking really cool and kind of volumetric. I'm going to give it a blue look and give it whatever color you want. I'm going to give it a strength of three. And um, that's all we need for now. We have it done. You can see in the rendered view, this is how it's looking. I don't know what that flickering is. It's probably a bug, but uh, yeah, now we have this style going on. Now what we're going to expound on is how parts of these are really highlighted. I'm actually give it a strength of five. So some of these are highlighted and some of these aren't. So I'm going to go to render 
and render image. So now we have this. So now I'm gonna head on over to compositing. Let's click use nodes and then shift A and get viewer, V-I-E, the viewer node. And we'll put the image here into the image. Now let's go on over to view and fit it to the view here. So now we can see what's going on. I'm going to right here on this line, add in a contrast note. So C O N brightness contrast, put it there and I'm gonna give it a contrast of 15. What that's going to do is really start to accentuate those really highlighted parts. Maybe give it a contrast of 20. So now it's really starting to look really cool. I'm going to go ahead and get a lens distortion lens distortion node and put it right there and click dispersion. So now we have that really, really cool holographic text look. Now I'm never a big fan of just a plain black background. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go to the solid, I'm going to go get a, a plane here, RX90 to put it there. I'm going to hit G and move it here and then I'm going to uh, move him back a little bit. So now, and then I'll scale it down a little bit. So. I'm going to hit tab and subdivide it a couple times to our however many squares I want behind it. I don't want it to be too distracting. I think right there is really good. And then I'm going to scale it down and then hit G just like this. Okay. So I'm going to hit control A and apply scale. I'm going to get another wireframe modifier. So add modifier wireframe and make this one super, super thin as well. So something like this for now, I'm going to go to the rendered view, remove that yellow outline and I'm gonna get a new emission material. Actually, I'm just gonna drop down and hit this blue one and then click this little button right here to kind of duplicate it. So separate it from this one. And then we'll give it a, we'll keep the strength at five and bring the thickness down a little bit. So we'll bring it down to like this, render, render image. And then we'll see how that looks once the compositing kicks in. Actually, we have to go to the compositor and to actually make it kick in when you hit render, you have to plug this last node into the composite. Then we go here to rendering and we have our really cool holographic text style here that you can use for any kind of sci-fi thing, whatever you want. It's really cool. It's really useful for a lot of things. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.